everybody. Welcome back to the Latch Trauma Podcast. Melissa here. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, the Latch Trauma Podcast is a place for parents, especially mothers, to gather who are truly in the trenches of parenthood to talk about all of the good, the bad, the hard, the super easy and super fun and rewarding parts of motherhood. Um, today I'm with Lindy. We're going to chat about some of the things that's really kind of funny. I was just... <laughs> We're like recording a bunch of content. This is a very, very funny thing. It's not really funny. Nobody else is going to think it's funny. But um, so we're recording some content today because Kennedy's headed out of town, who is our um, producer. You go back a couple episodes and you can hear my uh, segment with him. But I just went to the restroom and the (laughs) toilet was broken. And I realized as I was taking the lid off of the toilet and looking at the innards of the toilet, that within two seconds of doing that, I could diagnose the situation with the toilet and I could fix the toilet. And I came in here and I said, you like a should... master plumber? No, 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 no. <laughs> but that's what I came, I came in here and I said, you know what, for this next podcast, cause we have to do one more before Kennedy goes away. I said, I think we should talk about the things that either we didn't learn growing up that we wish we had and like not bad, just like stupid stuff, like how to fix the toilets or the things that like we did pick up that we use more than like anything we learned in the classroom or things that we're making sure that we are pointing out to our children, um, you know, as they grow that have been helpful for us. You're listening to Latch Mama Podcast. I'm your host, Melissa Wirt, busy mom of six and owner of LatchMama.com. Join us each week as we talk about pregnancy, breastfeeding, postpartum, and all things motherhood. It's really, really random stuff. But anyway, yeah. I'm very appreciative of the fact that I know how the inside of a toilet works. That skill, like knowing that... So what was wrong? Give me your diagnosis so, of the so, said toilet. Well, when I went in there, there was some toilet paper left from the person before me. Okay. Um, and I went to flush it, and it didn't really flush, but there was tension on the flusher. Okay. So I knew before I so took the cover connected. off. Yeah. So I knew before I took the cover off that it was most likely connected, but there wasn't water in the tank. So I had to figure out why there wasn't water in the tank. My first thing was just to push the flapper down and make that seal. And then as soon as I did that, it started filling up with water. So I had to hold the seal until the tank filled up with water until there was enough, enough to, to actually pressure, flush the yeah. toilet. Um, but I'm sure if I had never learned those skills, I'd be terrified to take that porcelain like top <laughs> off of the toilet. And like, what are you going to find? And it's clean water that goes back there. But like, yeah, it but can as be a really kid, scary. You're like, you absolutely. think the poop's stored back there. Yeah, like, absolutely. Yes. You have no idea how that thing works. So yeah, I don't know. So we're going to talk today about this stuff. Join us for the best podcast that there is ever. <laughs> Toilets and more. Toilets and more. <laughs> um, okay. So but right. you, we had a couple. Um, okay, so we also can we talk about stairs? <laughs> this We're gonna go from toilets to stairs. To stairs. Okay. Yeah. At what age do you teach your child <laughs> what stairs are and how to go up and down said stairs? Because there is a lot of different input mm-hmm. in the group that I have seen that has like made my head go sometimes. Yeah. Because from the time our kids become mobile, they learn how stairs work. Yeah. Um like from the time they're crawling, we will sit with them while they crawl up a couple of stairs and then we will show them how to go back down on their bellies yep. and we work with them and we work with them and we work with them because we're not always going to be someplace with the baby gate. Yep. We're not always going to be in a situation where we can, I don't know what I'm doing with my arms right now, Yeah. where we can help our babies yeah. come down the stairs. No? Agreed. No, that's what we do. We kind of play on it at nine, ten. I mean, that's a great one to pull up on is yeah. the stairs. And we play on it and we teach them to slither down like a little seal yeah. backwards. They get pretty good at it and they fly down. Yeah, but be ready um, though because they'll go to every place at, at every mm-hmm. park and climb up things that you yeah. never would think that they would No, I will up. say like we went to, on a va- beach vacation once and it was a house we'd never been to. I did take the gates. Absolutely. Because I have some gates just to literally like, hey, we are staying in this area yep. because I don't know what's going on down there and it's a beach house and then and there's the a pool out the back. Yeah. Like, no. But at home, we teach them that skill. Yeah. We Holy teach them to be safe on the houses. stairs. Yes. I'm not saying you don't still travel with ba- baby gates, but just learning yeah. that school skill. Yeah. Um, what else? If anything that you didn't learn that you would. Um, well, I'll throw out my little sewing one because okay. my mom grew up sewing. They didn't have a lot of money when they got married. So she would make some clothes for herself. And so I grew up sewing. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And I think it's a great skill just to know how to, you have a basic needle and some thread and how to thread a needle and how to just put a button literally Mm -hmm. in and out of the fabric and back Mm -hmm. through it to where you could stitch something together. Maybe your button fell off for an Mm -hmm. interview or something happened. I think that's a really good skill just to be able to stitch something together. Oh, this is one we didn't talk about at the beginning, which is like, we're going to go like deep and like toilets and then like back around because toilets stairs because needles I mean, and feelings isn't isn't that isn't that motherhood <laughs> like in general it's like you're gonna be you're like in one place in your head and all your feelings one minute and then next time you're like wiping a butt no but here's the deal i think it is important mm, this is gonna mm. I, don't, I don't think this is gonna make people mad it might but like whether you believe it or not i think it is important for kids to understand the meaning of holidays on a secular level as well as a religious level. So I think it's important for like, okay, so I had no idea what you're going to say. I know. I thought I know, you were going to say know, something I'm like, we'd already totally, talked about. I know. Oh, I'm, to- I'm totally <laughs> going in left field. So like my kids who are not being raised in a church right now can tell you what Easter is in a secular way. And also like why like 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 why easter is a holiday they can tell you why okay. christmas is a holiday they can do whatever they believe whatever they want to believe we support them and however they want to do it but i think that yeah i i think it's it is it's important from like a personal connection standpoint like i think mm-hmm. you should be able to be able to kind of meet people where they are yeah i i think that just comes down to accept accepting mm-hmm. everybody for who they are yeah. and getting to know them a little bit better. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, you know, you can easily do it as like some people believe or like mm-hmm. this is, you know. So anyways, I know that's like a random deep thing, but I think it's an important thing. Yes. I don't know. I no. agree. No, I do. Um, what else? What else, what else are we about? Um, saving money, I think, was something that my husband was taught very well and I was not. Um, and I think you can still see it now almost to an extreme. But um like how compounding interest works from like a credit standpoint as well as like a wealth standpoint. Um, and how, you know, if you take half of your tooth fairy money and actually, you know, invest it as opposed to spend it, what is that going to look like when your mommy and daddy's age? And it's, I mean, it's significant if you actually run the math. Yeah. You know, and that's, I think that's a really, really big skill for young kids to understand, but they can still understand just the, basics of how it works Uh whether they're there mentally um or not but they will remember absolutely if you make it important like our 14 year old well he got a debit uh, an account like two years ago when he Mm -hmm. was 12 but he just recently got a debit card so he has his own card and so now all these conversations are coming up about accounts and And savings and spending and all these things yeah so like ours like we talk to them a, a lot about money um just because we want to make sure that they're not like entitled little pricks when they grow up but um like nathan will say all the time he'll say something like um i mean you don't own the house the bank does so at least like he like kind of <laughs> understands a little bit yeah. you know and th- they are processing a little bit on like how that yeah. actually works but just having a conversation of just about like responsibility when it comes to money and stuff like that yeah. um do you have another one well, we talked about feelings. I also yes. think it's important for kids to be able to say yes or no, like if they need. And and, and kind of, I mean, that's the lard. That's a, it's a simple thing to say, mm-hmm. but we have those cam- conversations often, whether mm-hmm. it's wanting to feel included in a group or things like that. And really just reinforcing that if it's not something you want to do, yeah. work, build the confidence. No, that's not. Or... I don't have the time or I yep. need to do schoolwork. So it kind of plays into responsibility. Yeah. Confidence and all that. And, yeah. To piggyback on that too. We were also talking about FOMO. I mean, my kids literally get the worst FOMO oh, yeah. yep. ever. And Daily. like that is part of life. I mean, yep. every single day you have to make a choice yeah. of where you spend your time and where you are. Like, yeah. am I sad? I'm missing, you know, something happening at the house right now. Absolutely. Yeah. But like there's responsibility here and you just have to make decisions of where you want to be. Um, Learning when your body needs rest, yeah, which is probably, I mean, it was definitely not something that was talked about for me growing up, but it's definitely like become a learned trait as I've gotten older, Mm -hmm. um, is actually learning like kind of just when to be still and like when your body needs a break. Yeah. No, that's really good. 
Um, and I don't think it comes very naturally for kids sometimes, but then I think that that's where you see a lot of like significant behavioral changes is when they've been going and going and going and going without, you know, really getting that rest. Um, when you think about, it doesn't have to just be a nap. There's lots of forms of rest, right? Yeah. But naps, you're like, oh, like you're not a baby or, yeah. oh, you're not like Pop-Pop because Pop-Pop now naps like every day and that's like his <laughs> nap time and Pop-Pop can do that because Pop-Pop's retired and he can do what he wants. But like, you know... I'll say like, do, do you want to go rest? Like you can even sleep. Like, and, yeah. and they literally look and they're like, I'm not like a, a little baby. kid. And yep. I'm like, a nap is not a it's bad not a thing. Like yep. it's not a punishment. We talked about it in college, that 10 to 15 minute, mm -hmm. like what is the ultimate, like that perfect nap time to where you're yeah. not um, exhausted, but it's like very, very restful for your body. Yeah. Um, teaching nutrition, I think is, Mm -hmm. is a is a crucial aspect of what we need to be doing and um, nothing like country. dieting or anything like that yeah absolutely. you to talk but about the food groups and yeah like nathan, education nathan looked at me the other day and he was like i mean if i eat this he's like where is the protein or like where am i getting my mm. protein mom and i'm like that is a great you know there's a little bit of protein in the cheese there but that's right like let's figure out how we can circle back and you know get more protein and but that i mean that's 10 years old but you can also look at somebody and say, hey, everything on your plate right now is the same color. You know, can yeah. we can we can we add another color? Like what can we add that can add, you know, green or, you know, something yep. like that and talk to them about that. Um, and I think that leads right into like yeah, cooking. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. So what do your kids make? What can they make? Um, and like when? Yeah. So Nathan started eggs at like four to five. We had a we had a. Um, uh, electric like stove then we have a gas stove now so now it's a little bit more it's not going to be that early for them moving forward um that open flame thing is a little yeah. a little precarious yeah. um but scrambled eggs um is definitely a thing um like toast they can do um nathan can make mac and cheese alex is our little chef he thinks he can make like filet asparagus and like homemade mac and cheese which he 98 percent can do on him on his own right now and he's eight, but, um, like those first foods, like to get them through the day, sandwiches, mm -hmm. um, scrambled eggs. Um, the thing with like kids too, I found that if you constantly do it for them, you're never going to know if they can do it themselves, you know, mm -hmm. and it's not a failure to step back and let them make a giant mess and try and figure stuff out on their own. Yeah. And that's like when they're going to learn. Yeah. I taught mine. They can do grilled cheese. Okay. Um, they also do these simple little pizzas in the oven with bread. Okay. Um, and they'll do sauce. And as disgusting as this is, they sometimes call it ketchup pizza because Lennox will do ketchup instead of pasta sauce. Okay. Not any healthier, but he can do it. So he like does a swirl and then he puts cheese in his toppings and whatever okay. and puts it in the oven. Um, he also loves to make quesadillas because he can put whatever in it and it kind of sticks together and yeah. he's learned to flip it. But it's funny. It's interesting. I left the swim meet last night and I'm like, I didn't even call my kid. Like I knew he was going to the pool at like five o'clock. Yeah. But like I didn't call and him. He's how old? I mean, just he's just turned freak. 14. Yeah. But still like that's new for him. That's new yeah. for us. Like I'm always like checking in and I know where they are. So I came home and I was like, I assume Lennox is here. Like and, she's, and she just laughed to sit her. She's like, yeah, he's here. She's like, he, he came home later than I thought. I was thinking she was going to say like 930. And yeah. she's like, no, he came home at like 715. She's like, he made a big quesadilla and went upstairs and... <laughs> It's so crazy. It's like, yay. Like he, he like made himself some he food. He remembered like, to eat. Like he, he listened knows to yeah. how to make something. Yeah. It's not everything, but yeah. something, but they can all make us, even my five-year-olds, they can go and make a peanut butter and jelly, grab some applesauce, yeah. grab a banana, get some chips. They can make themselves which it's, a meal. Li it's life changing. You don't, have they make to a provide. mess. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. a heck of a mess. And heck there's triple the amount of jelly of peanut butter, but like they did it. Yeah. So absolutely. Really and you cool. didn't, yeah. Um, what else? Um, we I talked about more basic skills. Like I swear <laughs> some came up. I wish I knew how to change an oil or a tire. Yes. I don't know how to do that. You don't know how to change tire? I don't. You, and don't, the other you also day, don't know how to drive a five speed either. That is a hundred percent on my I list. I could do. I did. I love you. Drive my friend's car a couple of times in high school around Brannerville. Um, It was terrifying because there was a lot of hills and I did it. But I've not driven that since. Yeah. And that's been a very long time. Um, wait, no, what was I talking about real quick before? Not food. The car. Yes. yes. So as we were washing the transit the other day and they're like, mom, you have two extra tires under here. And I'm like, I had no idea. So like looked under and yeah, I've got two you spares. Two? 
two spares under my transit. Is that because when something's really long? You I don't know. Two? I don't know. But it made me think. I'm like, I have no idea how to change those. Like, it would be really, I, I should probably, I could probably just YouTube it. Kennedy learned to build a house. I can probably learn to change a tire from YouTube video. You would figure it out on the side of the road if you had to. But like, I don't have a jack. Like, no, how- you have a jack in the car too. There's, if there's, if okay. there are spares, See, these are the things that I would have spares, loved to know how to change. If there are spares, there's probably normally a jack. If your spare is up underneath the car, and normally there's yeah. the piece of the jack there's that actually there. lowers the, lowers the tire down. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. So yeah, oil and changing a tire. Yeah, I would love. I would love to know how to do an oil change. I think that's something that I would love to do. Yeah. Um, okay. What else are we talking about? What else? Um, laundry. Yes. So guys, I don't do my own laundry. Never been very good at it. I used to in college. <laughs> I played a sport and I had a lot of laundry. And I used to go buy clean underwear instead of do my laundry. And my coach found out and she used to get so mad at me, but it was so much easier than actually doing my laundry. And I don't know Are why. Are you like, serious? I, I can do laundry. Like Catherine got sick in the middle of the night the this other night. I stripped thing you your hate. bed and put it in there. I, uh, I don't know. I mean, now it's become a joke that I don't do the laundry. Like Eric just laughed. Like it's really like, the most simple thing. Like you I throw understand. it in and turn it on. Yeah, I didn't know how the I didn't know how the washing machine worked. Actually, I had to ask <laughs> Eric, and like we've been in the house for like a <laughs> year and a half. I think I actually asked my mom because I knew I was going to get so much shit from Eric. But there's plenty of things that he doesn't know how to do. That yeah, it's it. No, it's it fun. just doesn't bring me joy. You know, like let's. And I know it doesn't bring a lot of people joy, and it sounds so privileged right now. But like. I'll make my kids dinner every night of the week. I put the music on. I dance in the kitchen. Yeah. Like it just, but it's one of those so mom things where joy. if you can do it money wise yeah. and take that off your plate as a mom, yeah. you can a hundred percent do that. And if it's good for your mental health and all that, yeah. you d- do it. It seems like, stupid. It no, seems like a stupid. No, thing to take but there's no list, judgment. Though. There should be nothing yeah. like that. Cause but, some people might do it with meals or some people yep. might do it with lawn care or I yeah. mean, Really? I talked to my husband. We do this tick and mosquito spray. He's like, yeah. I'm going to see if there's a home treatment. Yeah, I'm like, no. oh my gosh, no. It's like, so much I, less money. No, no, yeah. no. You're done. You're not doing it. Um, can I ask a question? I've never known the difference between perennials and annuals. Oh. Does something come back and something not come back? The perennials come back every year. Perennials and the annuals come back are just annuals for that summer. Bloom and then do you pull the whole thing out of the ground and you have to plant a new one? <sighs> well... I am not the gardening expert, but yeah. most of the time those roots die down so much that you can just churn the soil up. Okay. Or, you know, turn and it around and okay. it kind of blends in and it's fine. Some of them are bigger plants that I will just pull out. Can we call this the most random podcast episode yeah. ever? Yeah. But that's why I plant a lot of perennials because it's just, it's such a nice surprise. And then they come it's back. Like, well, and what's nice is at the end of the year, I mean, you can just mow down some of these things. But what happens if you mow down a perennial? They come back next year because they oh. suck all of because the perennials have bulbs. OK. And then most of the annuals have roots. <laughs> so it literally sucks down all the stuff from the plant and it stores it in the root or wow. in the bulb. And then the bulb blooms again. How do you feel about boys learning about menstruation and at what age? Oh, my God. <laughs> we just went from perennial bulbs. <laughs> Well, I was thinking about these are all like, we're just going to call this like the mom dump episode of like, what is in my brain that I would. Okay. We're switching mailboxes like real fast in here. We are. Yeah. But it's good for you. I have had the conversation with Lennox. Okay. It's like, he's been through all of it. And I'm like, what would you do if a girl had a problem? Like, what would you do? A problem? Like, I mean, like Like, if she was. I don't know. Cause there's been stories where like someone's seen like a boy's seen like on a girl's pants or whatever yeah. and he's like giving her a sweatshirt or something yeah. at school and so like sweet. i've never asked my kid hey like you should maybe why don't you just carry around a tampon and a pad like in case Are some you, girl's in a big trouble Kennedy, i don't know i Kennedy, saw some other no would you Kennedy, do that Kennedy says absolutely not <laughs> i don't think most would but i think there are some could kids. you imagine being a boy and having a no. Ba- like no 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 but i hope my kid would understand that this is part of life I, and I well, and I especially very, think working with small. Lash Mama in the birth and nursing and all that, like my boys are 100 percent gonna understand. My boys, how have, they can support somebody. My boys have no idea that breasts are have anything to do uh, with other than feeding babies. I know eventually <laughs> it'll, it'll happen; it'll be fine. I mean, like they'll learn it, but I don't know. It's funny. Well, we had this conversation because, and this is totally kind of off topic, but well, not just off topic today. So he's getting a phone for his birthday. Who, Gabe? Linux. Okay, 14. So we said 14. 
but we I keep talking about like complete phone issues and safety things and all mm-hmm. this and how yep. there was this post in Midlothian Moms and this very responsible girl got herself into a bad situation yeah. and I'm like it can happen like this he's like yeah he's like well he's like I know girls are often sexualized and I was just like <laughs> <laughs> the statement coming out of his mouth and i'm like well like like yeah he's like it's really bad and i was like oh you're like you're is it sweet like it's it's kind of so true weird. but like it's so weird like it came out of your mouth we but were, like yeah. i don't know very weird conversation but we do talk about it we were getting um, out of the car last night like 10 30 at night guys okay after i had three kids at a swim meet well four kids if you counted the four-year-old my in-laws my husband my mom I somehow ended up literally just coming home with the 10 year old. We're getting out of the car and he goes, Hey mama, when's dad going to have the talk with me? Like, like literally (laughs) after 10 PM at night. And I looked at him and I was like, what What? talk? I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, I mean the sex talk mom. He's like, I think I'm ready. And I was like, (laughs) sweetie, I was like, you had such a great swim meet. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. (laughs) Yeah. We'll talk about this tomorrow. Bye it's so funny though it's hilarious i know it's so close to our house though my oldest daughter's almost 11 oh it's gonna hit you i'm sure at some point like they're gonna have i mean they'll escape some of the years because they'll be off off to college but they have four sisters like yeah they're gonna gonna have to know Mm -hmm. um what else what other little life (sighs) skills life little little tidbits uh don't wear open-toed shoes when you ride bicycles (laughs) <laughs> that's a life hack right there that's like it's one so for our random. family <laughs> what it sucks have you ever tried have you ever what? stubbed your toe like riding a bike or riding a motorized thing with open toed shoes yeah yeah that's a family rule that we have i think kids should learn to mow the lawn see don't know how to do that either you don't know how to work a i mean lawnmower? i know how to like do that thing where you pull it up in the air and you we like, got a lawnmower. You, you hit that button that <laughs> makes like the oil and the gasoline come together. Okay, and then you so pull that thing and then you push it. We got married and we got a lawnmower. It's okay. lasted till now. It's lasted 16 years. So this lawnmower got so old. So the point, you had to pull it and it was not self-propelled. So it was a push mower. But seriously, you'd have to prime it. Uh-huh. Well, that, that's what I was talking about. When you yes. hit the button, is it the you gas and the oil together? You have to prime up this together? pressure. I don't know what okay. it does. I don't know. But anyways, you'd literally have to work on... I called him him. So you'd have to work on it for about 10 minutes and then you'd have to sit and wait 24 hours and it would work the next day. Hold on. <laughs> what? So you had to, you had to start your gas <laughs> cutting the day before you actually needed to cut your grass. But he was like 15 years old. Like got to give him the benefit of the doubt. It was, he was like an elderly gentleman that just, he needed some warming up and it just took <laughs> <laughs> before he could perform for you. Okay. Oh, all right all right get it together <laughs> he's been replaced with a newer version <laughs> although i hate this newer version it's electronic and it takes lennox four days to mow the lawn because it dies a Be- third of the way through because it doesn't take gas it yes battery operated I it you traded it in you upgraded last- and it just didn't do as well for you no <laughs> okay anyways yeah learn to love mow the lawn yeah i don't know how to do that <laughs> Um, oh gosh what else um, <laughs> I don't know uh, uh. storms do you stay in your car or get out of your car if you're in a thunderstorm okay do you like go find safety isn't isn't like the inside your car the safest place you can be during a thunderstorm did you grow up knowing that probably I mean you got rubber tires so I don't know I was always told that you don't go find like unless it's a tornado you don't go try and find safety you just pull over and you I mean, I hang out that. in your car yeah pump learning to pump gas which i think most yeah. kids do when you start yeah. to drive but do you know the arrow on the gas tank thing no Where the this e trick is? No, oh like when you're looking at your gas okay tank, sorry yes there's e there's okay. an arrow that shows what side of the car oh, the i don't have an arrow are you but sure i drive a commercial are vehicle. you sure you don't have an arrow i'll check i've gotten it down to four miles left <laughs> Yeah, so are you? <laughs> yeah. And nothing ever pops up. I've only, so. I've only, no, 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 no. It doesn't pop up. It's just there all the time. All the time. It's a light? No, it's an arrow. It's like a, okay, it's like a triangle. I'll go look. It's all a right. triangle that points in the right direction of what side the gas tank is on. All right. I'll go look. I don't know. Oh, getting back to like social media and stuff <laughs> and phones. No, this is a good one. No. 
slightest, like large that space we laugh, nothing we jump to everything. is private yeah. on social media. Nothing. Like literally, if my kids can launch knowing that lesson, yep. and I really hope they do after. Not in a private I run, group. I, I run a social media group. No, nothing, nothing. is private. You literally nothing. do not have the privilege of privacy on, on the internet ever. ever, no matter where you are. If you are not going to, like if you would not say it to somebody's face, do not say it in a private Facebook group and think that it's not going to get back to the person. Yeah. Like literally yeah. I, that is the, that, that literally blows my mind almost every single day running. A and there's that. Ours. And then it goes to like cards with like a credit card versus a debit oh, card. Yeah, yes. And now I think way back in the day it was like, just if you're, wor- if you're worried, use your credit card. It's easier to kind of file something yeah. about it. Mm-hmm. Now, they will, I mean, you can file and you can get thing, your money back on like a debit account and I think, and yeah. things like that. But that was something we did kind of just talk a little bit with Lennox is that just the safety of putting your card in to buy something. Or yeah. we talked about like the little E and the security, like, and on I don't even website? know how much, yeah, I don't, I don't even know how much that means or yeah. how safe it is. See, I trust the internet. Like I trust a the lot. internet 10 times more than going to get cash out or the, or the gas station or anything like that. Really? Think, well, it's also because I know what security features we have to have as a website. Okay. And I know and I, like yeah, I don't what, like if that much. website is hosted by somebody like a Shopify or something like that, okay. I mean, things are so encrypted at this point and so protected okay. that. And then speaking to that, I tell him, I'm like, that's a little like daily check every day is to log in. Cause he has a login to Hold a on, bank do account. Do you check your bank account every day? No, but I think he ner- needs to just learn to how learn it how understands it. Yeah, absolutely. and see how, how the money. I didn't have that back in the day. Yeah. You're like I a see, paper or something. I think now you have an app and think, you can see your, yeah. your, pro- your charges and stuff. I think stuff. that's why I'm laughing because I didn't, I never <laughs> thought as a, I mean, as a kid, I never did that. I mean, I didn't have the internet until my junior year of high school mm. and we had AOL dial up. Yeah. Which is crazy. I didn't have a phone until my sophomore year of college. This is like all new stuff for me, like yeah. with when kids should have phones. And but stuff. like if I'd had that, I remember when I had fraud on my account and they took like 12 grand out. Whoa. And I got a call from the lady at QVC. But what did they buy? <laughs> it's like they buy purses. They bought. Um, wow. They called them notebooks. And I'm like oh. literally in my head. I'm like notebooks. I'm like, why are I didn't like, no, I didn't buy any notebooks. No, no, Lindy, not your spiral brown dollar notebooks. Computers. Oh, I was I was going like she's like, but we're calling because you bought like <clears throat> I don't even know how many of them. So she's like, it flagged our services. I'm like, yeah, no. no. So we managed to get that back, but like I didn't back in that time. Like yeah. I didn't have an app to check purchases to where it would have said, oh, QVC six grand. Like yeah. so, it's just something that I mentioned to yeah. Lennox. Like That's pay good. attention. Like you have something right here that you yeah. can check. Like, cool. and know how to navigate the app. That, yeah. I guess that's I guess all. you have to teach them, like, how to find resources on the internet and good resources Probably. versus bad resources. Like, yeah. I don't know. It's all a lot. Maybe we'll do another episode about it. Okay. That was yeah. our randomness for the day. Love you guys. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>